Insta360 have had a big year releasing three brand new cameras in 2022 alone and now have a collection of extremely versatile cameras under their belt. The question that I'm being asked the most is, which one do I get? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the comparisons between the One X2, the new X3, the One RS, and the new One Inch 360 edition in hopes to narrow down the selection according to your needs. If you're new to the channel, I've created in-depth videos on each of the cameras which outline their individual functions and features in more detail. If you'd like to check them out before watching this video, I'll link a playlist right here and at the end of the video as well. First, let's take a quick look at the individual cameras. This is the Insta360 ONE X2, which came out in October 2020. It's a compact 360 degree action camera. It shoots 5.7K 360 degree video, is pocket sized and convenient with a built in quarter inch mount and has a single lens capture mode in 1440p. This is the X3, which is their latest 360 degree camera released in September this year. It's also a compact 360 degree action camera, shoots 5.7K 360 degree video, is also pocket sized and convenient with a built-in quarter inch mount and it has a single lens capture mode but now up to 4k 30 frames a second this is the modular one rs twin edition which was released in march 2022 you can add to or upgrade the components at your own speed such as the lens core or battery the twin edition includes a 5.7k 360 degree and 4k boost lens which means you can change between 360 and wide angle imaging with the switch of a lens the new rs core has the best ever flow state stabilization in improved audio, faster Wi-Fi, and instant zoom feature. And finally, this is the one inch 360 edition released in June of this year. Similar to the One RS modular system, this has an interchangeable 360 degree lens. Add or upgrade individual components such as the lens, core, or battery. Shoots at 6K 360 degree video with incredible low light performance due to its massive dual one inch sensors. It uses the same core as the One RS, which includes their best ever flow state stabilization, improved audio, and fast Wi-Fi. Now that we know what we're taking a look at, let's take them out on the road and compare the video quality. I mounted up all four cameras and went out for a ride to get a nice side-by-side -side comparison. All of the cameras are set to the standard auto shooting modes with no color grading added. Each angle was set to the default angle when exporting from Insta360 Studio so they're all balanced equally. What you're seeing is coming straight out of the cameras. In terms of overall quality, I'll let you guys be the judge. Personally, I think the One X2 and One RS are on par with each other, with a slight step up in quality with the X3, and the biggest difference noticeable with the One Inch 360 Edition. They all have incredible flow state stabilization. Even with the One Inch 360 Edition bouncing around like it was, the image was surprisingly fine. And I think the reason for that vibration, it wasn't so much because of its weight. I mean, the weight didn't help, but traveling at 40 k's an hour, there was just some weird vibration going on through my bike on the left side only, because even when I switched it around, I saw the other camera just flopping around a little bit as well. But it didn't really matter because it was fine anyway. That's how good flow state stabilization is. It's pretty impressive. The X3 and the one inch 360 edition have an export bit rate of 120 megabits per second, which helps maintain video quality, where the One X2 and the One RS export at 100 megabits per second max. The X3, the One RS, and the one inch 360 edition all have loop recording, where the One X2 doesn't. Active HDR is available for the X3 and One RS, and Active HDR is also now available for the One X2 via their firmware update. The 1 inch 360 edition surprisingly does not have active HDR at this time. All action cameras have very small sensors and tend to struggle with low light in general. You can see here that the One X2, the X3 and the One RS all have about the same image quality when it comes to low light. The 1 inch 360 edition, 1 inch sensors definitely help in low light reducing noise and maintaining image quality. Using action cameras where there is a lot of light definitely helps. So if you feel the need to use your camera while it's dark out, for best results, try riding in well-lit areas. All of these night shots were taken in auto mode as well. You can definitely go into manual mode and tweak some of the settings for even better results. I released a video a little while back on the best settings for the One RS 4K boost lens, which I'll link at the end of the video. Make sure you check it out as it provides a good place to start for dialing in manual settings for nighttime riding. The One X2 takes 18 megapixel photos. The X3 takes 72 megapixel photos. The One RS takes 48 megapixel photos when using the 4K boost lens. Otherwise, it's the same 18 megapixel stills as the X2 with the 360 degree lens. And the one inch 360 edition takes 21 megapixel images. 
Each camera also shoots in HDR, which is great to help capture as much detail as possible. And all of these images are straight out of the camera and have not been graded. The battery capacity for the One X2 is 1630 milliamp hours and has a shoot time of 80 minutes, shooting at 5.7K at 30 frames a second. The battery for the X3 is a larger capacity at 1800 milliamp hours, but has more processing power, which brings the shoot time to about the same. 81 minutes shooting at 5.7K at 30 frames a second. The One RS is 1445 milliamp hours with a shoot time of 82 minutes with the 360 degree lens and 75 minutes with the 4K lens at 60 frames a second. And finally, the Insta360 1-inch 360 edition has a battery capacity of 1350 milliamp hours and gives you 62 minutes of shooting at 6K 30 frames a second. So that's 81 minutes out of the X3 when in loop recording mode if you're using it as a dash cam. It's an hour and 20 minutes, so it's not too bad. If you're going on any other longer rides, you could maybe take a spare battery with you or charge it when you take your little breaks and stuff like that and you'll just keep on recording, baby all the time. The One X2 is waterproof up to 33 feet or 10 meters. The X3 is the same. The One RS is waterproof only up to 16 feet or five meters. And the one inch 360 edition isn't waterproof at all, but IPX3 water resistant, meaning it is protected against rain or snow and should not be submerged in water. The One X2 is quite small and can fit in my hand and pocket quite easily. It weighs only 149 grams and that's including the camera and battery. The X3 is slightly wider and heavier with a 31 gram increase. The One RS is 70.1 millimeters by 49.1 millimeters by 32.6 millimeters with the 4K lens. When using the 360 degree lens, the width increases by 9.4 millimeters. It's basically a little bigger than the GoPro Hero 10 with the media mod off and slightly smaller with the media mod on. It weighs 125 grams with the 4K boost lens and 135.3 grams with the Insta360 lens. The one inch 360 edition is the largest and heaviest of them all weighing at 239 grams. I've used all of these cameras for some time now since the release. Obviously not the X3 too much because it came out just last month, but I have still taken it out on quite a few trips. And I've developed a bit of a pros and cons list for all the cameras and who would they most likely suit. For the One X2, the pros are that it's small, it's lightweight and can be used as a moto vlogging camera. The cons, the screen is quite small and a little hard to navigate. The quality isn't as good as the others, especially at night. It's awkward to mount as a moto vlogging helmet. Now, I mean, it is possible and it works fine and you'll get some awesome footage, but it's just a little awkward, especially just keeping it below the eye line and everything like that. It sticks out a little bit, it's a bit funny. I feel like this camera would suit action seekers the best. The screen is small, so it minimizes the chance to crack it. It's light, it's less expensive, and you can still get awesome footage out of it. So, you know, if you're on the trailies, doing wheelies, popping jumps everywhere, rocks flying around and all that, this would be your go-to. The X3 Pros. First up is that it has a nice big 2.29 inch touchscreen. This makes it super easy to see what you're doing and easy to navigate through the menus. It also has a vibration feature, which is perfect for when you're hitting record, it's attached to your helmet, you can feel the whole thing vibrate through your helmet, which is perfect. The slight step up in video quality, it isn't much, but it is a step up. It now has a quick menu, which is surprisingly extremely handy. And you can use it as your motor vlogging camera, especially now with a new 4K single lens mode. It looks amazing. The cons, the screen is large and it is easy to crack. I've already got a little mark on mine. I can't believe it. I only saw it yesterday. I don't even know how it happened, but there's a little mark. So it's prone to getting hit and scratched and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, be wary. It is slightly bigger and heavier than the X2 and the RS. Now, just so you know, when I shoot with the invisible selfie stick, I don't go past the first two. So that's my, that's my usual go-to. And I usually use the nice, big, thick sections as well. I don't go anywhere past that because you're gonna get some bouncy, bouncy footage, especially if you're going over a lot of bumps and stuff like that. If you're just cruising, you've got a nice, smooth, straight road and you just, you know, you just going for a rip, go all the way up, you should be sweet. But now that this is a little bit heavier, you're gonna get a little bit more wobble. Just keep that in mind. And like the X2, it is awkward to mount on your helmet as a motor vlogging camera. This camera is great for someone that's just entered the 360 degree camera world. If you're tossing up between the One X2 and the One X3, I'd say go the X3. It's also great to be used as a dash cam and to use as your everyday action camera. I like to use this as my secondary camera. So I'll have usually one camera hooked up to my helmet all the time and that's my main 
my main camera, gets all the audio, gets my talking, gets everything there. And then with this one, I'll just mount this on various parts of the bikes to grab some interesting angles. I use it as my secondary camera. The One RS Pros is that it's the perfect size for mounting on your helmet for when you want a moto vlog. You can switch between the 360 degree and 4K dedicated wide lens, which is the best of both worlds. And it's modular, meaning that you can upgrade this as you go. The cons is that it's more expensive than the X2 and the X3. The screen is quite small. It's a little bit hard to, to navigate all your settings and everything. It's you know, it's tiny, it's actually pretty hard to see what you're filming as well. I feel like this camera would suit anybody that has no camera at all. You're looking to enter the market and you want something that's gonna be the best of both worlds. Literally 4K boost lens and you got your 360 as well. This is perfect, it's super light. It's the lightest out of them all as well. Especially when you got the 4K lens on, which is gonna be on your helmet, you're gonna use the 4K lens. It's super, super light. Also, all of these cameras have mic adapters for them as well. So if you've got a microphone in your helmet, you can plug it into the side and you can literally record your voice while you're riding, which is pretty cool. The one inch 360 edition pros, very high quality video and amazing nighttime quality. The cons is that it isn't an action camera. It's not even classed as an action camera on their website. You can't use this as a moto vlogging camera. You just wouldn't. It's heavy, it's big. It's gonna be super weird to, you know, mount it on your helmet. Super expensive, $12.99 Australian. I didn't crack in the lens on that, but I mean like, you know, it's integrated with Leica. That's why the image quality is so good as well. It isn't waterproof. The screen is the exact same size of the RS, so it's pretty small. And I wouldn't recommend it for use on a motorcycle, especially with the selfie stick. I've done it once before and it was just just boinging around everywhere. This camera is perfect for professional creators who make videos for a living. And they just need a high quality 360 degree video to show their clients. Maybe of like some architecture, just high quality, good professional stuff. It's not an action camera though. Now my personal favorite is the new X3. The quality of the footage is up to my standard, especially for YouTube. I love the fact that it's got a massive screen on the back. I can easily navigate through it. I love that it's got vibration because as soon as you switch through your little modes and everything like that, when you hit record, start, stop, it vibrates and it feels really, really nice and responsive. And I love the quick menu. It makes life so much easier. Just quickly switching between different custom modes. Now, as always, I do have affiliate links in the description below. When you do use one of my affiliate links, there's usually a free gift like the invisible selfie stick or the Moto Mount bundle. And the Moto Mount bundle is now included for free with every X3 purchase. Now these free gifts are forever changing. They always change from product to product. I keep pushing, I keep hounding Insta360 to give you guys free stuff because we all love free stuff and I think you guys deserve it. But I'll keep you guys posted with that and if there are any sales that are happening so you can grab yourself a sweet, sweet bargain. So which of these cameras do you think suits you the most? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next vid. Oh my gosh, it was uh, <laughs> I had all of these mounted up to my bike and it was uh, it was a little bit a little bit hectic. I got some I got some looks. <laughs> like who is this guy? I actually felt like I was a news reporter with all those microphones and stuff just sticking at me going, oh um, but yeah, man. And then I had my GoPro on my helmet as well. So I was just like, what is this guy doing? Uh, that was pretty funny. Had to be there.